Hi, my name is John Brink. Thank you for joining us. You're watching A History of the BC Forest Industry. Thank you for watching the show today and I'm delighted to say our guest today is Mayor Lynn Hall of the city of Prince George. Welcome to the show, uh, Lynn. Thanks, John, for the invitation. Good to be here. Yeah, so is, I'm excited to have you. And uh, where, where were you? Are you originally from this area? or No, I'm originally from Dawson Creek, uh, born and raised, so about uh, 400 kilometers north uh, northeast of Prince George. Mm. Spent a lot of time in Prince George though when I was a young guy. We had uh, lots of family here and of course it was the biggest center closest to Prince George. Exactly. And, uh, closest to Dawson Creek so we were here quite often. Yeah and, and so you kind of grew up in Dawson Creek yeah. and then did you schooling there? Yeah or? I graduated from South Peace uh, Secondary what? Uh, went away to university to Simon Fraser and then off to Victoria. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, drifted sort of back and forth in and out of uh, Dawson Creek doing various things and eventually settled here in the early 80s. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's and, and what did you do in Dawson? You did some entrepreneurial stuff? Yeah, well, I had or? a little company that did some work uh, on, on golf courses uh, and uh, I was in, you know, the real estate business for a while. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, it, Dawson Creek was one of the best places to grow up in for me. It was a small community of about 10 or 12,000 people. Mile zero, right? Mile zero of the Alaska Highway, so lots of history there. Right. Uh, predominantly in those days, it was a farming community. Yes. And, uh, you know, my, uh, my folks, um, dad was an accountant, and okay. my, my mom uh, was a stay-at-home uh, mom. Yeah. Looked after my sister and I. Right. Uh, but it was a fantastic spot to grow up. Did, did you dad work for a major firm? Or did he, he did. For, yeah. He was an accountant with uh, Winspear Hamilton okay, uh, yeah. in, in the early days and then uh, he ended up going to uh, CJDC radio and television uh, station in Dawson Creek. Uh, right. Some buddies of his owned the station so he went there as their accountant Right. and he spent uh, probably the better part of 35 years there. Right. And, and you were born in 1954. 1954. That's not <laughs> always a number I want to throw out there, John, but it's all right. It's 1954. <laughs> yeah. I was born in 1940. So, uh, yeah. So the, uh, yeah. So then, then how did you, uh, d d how did you come to Prince George? Well, it was interesting. A, a buddy of mine uh, was, uh, was getting married. Yeah. And so I came over to the, was coming over to the wedding, uh, and his mom introduced me to my wife, Laurel. And here I am today. Uh, we've been married coming up 34 years, and I've been in Prince George, as I said, probably 35 years now. And uh, that's how I got here, because of my wife, and I thank her almost every day for that. Yes. Yeah. And, and then when you came to Prince George in 1984, then you worked in... ICBC for Yeah, I was with ICBC for a while and then I, I uh, went over to the gaming branch. I spent time at the gaming branch and that's where I was until I uh, became mayor in 2014. Yeah, but, but in between you were also part of the school board, right? I ran for the school board in 2001 in a by-election. Yeah. Uh, got in and I spent uh, until 2010 there. Yeah. Uh, so about nine or ten years, half of that I was uh, the board chair and then I ran for city council in 2010. Yeah. Uh, got a seat on city council. The school board was a good lot of experience, a right? Huge experience. Yeah, because it gave you exposure yeah. to a lot of issues and, and uh, uh, you know, through a lot of getting to know a lot of people and it did. leadership. It, it, it did. And, and it taught me a lot about leadership when I, when I first uh, became the chair. Interestingly enough, we went through some pretty difficult times during that seven or eight period, exactly. eight year period, uh, closed a number of schools. Yes. It was difficult. Delicate, delicate. Oh, period, my huh? goodness, it was, uh, it was a really difficult Why time. Why were the closures of the schools? Well, was it because the city was... It was a decline in, in student population. Yeah. Uh, there were some schools where we, uh, particularly in the outlying areas, where, you know, it was just not feasible to keep them running. No. And that was a difficult decision. But tough things to deal with, right? Very difficult when you see uh, hundreds of people sitting in front of you, uh, yeah. you know, wanting to keep their school open and understanding yeah. the impact on family. But uh, exactly. you know, understanding the impact on the community, John. Yeah, yeah, uh, was immense. Uh, was I immense. still remember. Yeah, you know, the so you were then the 
uh, the chair of the school board uh, for yeah, a period of time? for about five years. Yeah. yeah. So it, it kind of laid the foundation for you in terms of, uh, you know, dealing with difficult yeah. circumstances, becoming an effective communicator uh, and, and develop those skill sets that you would need in your later years, right? It, it definitely did and it also gave me uh, an opportunity to see uh, what the community was like and not only Prince George but of course Mackenzie is in the area, uh, Vailmount, McBride, Hickson, yeah. uh, so it gave me an opportunity to see those communities firsthand, yeah. uh, what made them tick yeah. uh, and I, I think when we got to the point where uh, we had completed those school closures uh, and I look back on it today we see the student population increasing, yeah. uh, we see things happening uh, where uh, closed schools are being reopened, Yeah, it, it is uh, a much better scenario yeah. and it tells me that the community is growing. Yeah and especially uh, you know I, uh, some of the developments north of the North and Chaco are fairly recently Absolutely. And, and kind of uh, all of a sudden, some of the schools that were marginal, maybe all of a sudden, yep. are now prospering because of the added. Well, population. you take a look at the development, as you know, along North of Chaco, up along uh, Tyner Boulevard, yeah. uh, various areas of our community, and and yeah. we're seeing schools now that are full. Yeah. And so the school district a whole new set of a problems. Whole, a whole new set of problems. Yeah. How do we expand that? Yeah. And uh, that's a, a big plus for our community. Yeah. And then and then you decided to run for city council mm -hmm. in 2010. Was that always already something that you kind of, uh, are you kind of a person that has that political thing in them? Yeah, yeah, I've always loved politics. <laughs> yeah. You know, from yeah. the time I was a little guy, I've all, yeah. for whatever reason, always watched it. Always yeah. watched it and uh, always participated in things in our high school. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I sat on the, um, uh, the, the uh, residence council when I was at university, but it, it always intrigued me. Uh, and in 2010, I remember saying to my family, uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, move away from the, the, the school board. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I thought, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll put my name in the ring and, and see how successful or not I am on getting on council. Did you get in? Yes. In the in. first try? Got in the first try in yeah. 2010, but I had run late in, in, in the late 90s yeah. for council and didn't get in. Yeah. Did you only run once then? Or? Uh, twice. Twice. Yeah, and didn't get in. Yeah. What happened? I think, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't run a very good campaign, but I, yeah. I think what it was is, is that I wasn't well known. No. Yeah, and uh, that's the key. I knew yeah. certain segments yeah. of the community because I was involved as a volunteer, yeah. but uh, I think just people didn't know who I was. Yeah, exactly. And 2001 comes along, I, I run for the school board, uh, and um, I really thought to myself, uh, if I don't get in, uh, then yeah. I'll set those ambitions aside and yeah. do something Go on else. To something else. Uh, yeah. But I got in, and that really laid the groundwork yeah. for and, me. And so you came in in 2010, and then. The another opportunity presented itself. I think we had Mayor Sherry Green who mm -hmm. then resigned, or or uh, something happened, and the seat became available, and you ran for the yeah. seat. Yeah, in 2014, Sherry didn't run. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I thought about it. You know, my I just thought about the options that were available. Right. And so decided to run. Yeah. Uh, and that was a very good campaign, and uh, I, I ran uh, against uh, Don Zorowski. Don Zorowski, uh, yeah. Don is, is uh, you know, a pillar in our community. There's yeah, no so question. many things yeah, here in the no city. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, and I uh, was fortunate enough to win that campaign, and yeah. then I ran again in uh, 2018, just a year yeah. and a few months ago. Yeah, and, 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 and then what happened to you in 2014 is just at the cusp of... The, the, the region and the city changing from one stage to yep. another area of growth, right? I thought we had so much opportunity and that really is what pushed me to run for mayor. Uh, yeah. uh, the opportunity for me was at hand. We had to take advantage of it as a community. Yeah. Uh, I saw the potential. I saw that we had that ability to grow our city, yeah. uh, not only f population wise, but also from an economic development perspective. Right and the amenities that we needed in our city. And I just saw us in much the same light as I learnt later on that the Kamloops and, and Kelowna's of the world were about 10 or 15 years ago. Exactly. And we had so much promise. <clears throat> and uh, it, it, you know, th that particular term was very, very exciting for me. Yeah. And but, council, it was... But the whole makeup kind of changed, right? Because we, we used to be 
you know, when I first came in in the 60s, uh, you know, the, it was a forced community and a, a cyclical industry it would go up yep. and down with that. And then it took, when you became mayor in that period, it took on more of a leadership role in the region. And it was yeah. looked at as being more diverse. Yeah, it was important for me to be very inclusive with the region. You talk about the forest industry as being cyclical, and we know that that just happens. Right. And uh, in early, you know, 2015, uh, you, you could sort of, you could see the start of the, the industry taking a change. Right. And it was important for me not just to be the mayor of Prince George, but it was important because of the geographical location and how big we were. Uh, we're the northern capital. Exactly. And we, we had to... I felt we just had to reach out to the other commuters and say, look, uh, we need to work together. Yeah. And if we're able to help you or you're able to help us, that's yeah. what we need to generate. Yeah, and what I saw in particular is, uh, you know, the city and, and under your leadership taking on the role of a leader, especially 2017, 2018, during the fires and yeah. all the people coming into the city. It, it really kind of cemented the role of being a leader, but also followed after that, uh, is the, uh, with the issues in the forest industry, the difficult times that uh, we went through, again, taking on that leadership role. Yeah, so those two years, we had about 13,000 people come to our city because we were opening our doors and this was a place for them to come to. Exactly. Uh, you know, they were being uh, sent from and evacuated from their communities. Yeah. Uh, and, and then after they left, uh, we started to understand really the devastation Exactly. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hectares burnt. Exactly. Uh, and that became a conversation. How can the industry utilize that burnt timber? Exactly. Uh, what's happening now to the forest sector in our outlying area, so from 100 Mile House North? Exactly. Uh, up to Mackenzie and out along Highway 16. Yeah. Uh, what is that impact? And that's yeah. when I brought a number of mayors together to have the conversation about what next. What's next? We yeah. have to deal with this collectively. Yeah. And each community I knew would do their own thing. Yeah. Uh, but we had to have the assurance and the comfort that all of us were on the same page. Yeah. And, and even more so than ever, that yeah. that working together in the leadership role from from Prince George and yourself and your, and your council is so important Absolutely. as we go through a transition period. Yeah. You know, the pine beetle. Uh, the spruce beetle combination with the fires has reduced the annual allowable yep. cut, uh, you know, virtually from a high of 80 million cubic yep. meters to 40 million cubic meters. About 20 mills have shut down, and and there have been uh, curtailments and and temporary shuts. But as the industry goes through the new reality, there is. A, a bright future ahead, right? I think so. There's going to definitely be some growing pain. So, you know, the forest industry is still the foundation of our economic development plan. Uh, it employs some 9,000 people in, in the area. Yeah. And it's important to the, to the province. Yeah. And there's About no... 160,000 people in, in directly involved. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and ex I, I think that there, there is going to be a bright future, but there's going to be tremendous growing pains, John, and I think we have to address that. Yeah. We can't, we can't just go from where we are today without thinking that over the next two or three years there'll be change. Yeah. We know no. there will be. Yeah, for sure. And, and then, uh, you know, the, the other part about it is that uh, if you kind of look at it again, uh, you know, at the region of Prince George, I always look at it, and I, I know you do too, we are the spruce capital of the yeah. world. We, we were, we are, and we will be as yeah. we go forward. It simply will be somewhat different, yeah. but there is a great, great future in the forest industry going forward. I absolutely agree. We're the forest capital of the province. Exactly. And I would go so far as to say we're, you know, we're one of the major forest uh, partners and one of the, you know, one of the major forest uh, communities in all of the country. Yeah. And I think we, we need to continue to recognize that. And yeah. I don't see that changing. No. Uh, and we have to embrace that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what sort of the premise of, of, of the work that I do in council. Yeah around how we can reach out to the other communities. Yeah, and, and uh, the other communities, First Nations, and yes. all together in, in being in the new yep. industry. And then sometimes the way I look at it, uh, Len, is that, uh, you know, the, with the industry the way it is today, uh, you know, five, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we won't recognize it. No. There'll be skill sets that we haven't even developed now. Yep. There'll be robotics, there'll be scanning, and all of those yep. 
things that will change the industry. We, I believe that we have to develop a center of excellence. Yep. I, I view it that can develop those skill sets, that can develop new products for new markets, new uh, processes uh, to grow more fiber per hectare and all of that. And I believe that should be in the Prince George area. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you. And we have the amenities here. And when I yeah. talk about those amen amenities, it's the, it's the college, it's yeah. the university, yeah. it's the UNBC Wood Laboratory and the work they're doing there. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's around the innovation of what we can do with various and not your your day-to-day -day wood products. How, how, how does that innovation work in, in building Prince George, building the province? Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely necessary. And then when we have that, uh, and, and then again, as we already do to a certain extent, that people will come from far and wide to see how we do it, uh, what are we doing, yep. and, and uh, you know. Well, you know, a piece that's not talked about a lot is the Pacific Bioeconomy Conference that we hold here in Prince George. Yes. And we see people coming from all over the world. Correct. Uh, we, had, we had representation from mayors from... Uh, Sweden and Scandinavian countries that would co that came to Prince George at the last yeah. conference to talk about what they do there yeah. and for me it's about what best practices in the industry uh, whether it be in the you know in, in, in the pack bio industry or whether it be in forestry and the connection uh, what best practices are happening around the world that will positively impact our forest sector exactly. here exactly exactly and that's where the opportunity are yeah. and and then the other things that are happening right now uh, in addition to the forest industry, it's taking on more and more of a regional center. I drive around downtown and I see things happening yeah. on, on, on George Street. I, I see uh, hotels going up yeah. and another three or four hotels that, will, uh, that are on the developing stages. Uh, the city is changing, Len. The city is changing. Yeah. Uh, and I see it every day and, and I'm proud of the change. Yeah. I, I know change can be tough for some people. Yeah. I understand that, uh, but we are changing. And one of the things when you talk about a, a center of excellence, uh, uh, Prince George is a hub city that delivers services as far south as Williams Lake and out to Haida Gwaii and up to Fort Nelson. Yeah. And we need to be prepared for that because we're going to see more of that happen. Yeah. And that's around healthcare and a multitude of other services. Yeah, and more or less taking the leadership role that, that problems in Vanderhoof or in Burns Lake or in McKenzie are, their problems are our problems. Yeah, absolutely. And, and their future is our yeah. future. And we have to work more together Although we're doing that already, but especially as we go forward, because yep. everybody is always fighting for those dollars, right? Oh, and and, yep. and in terms of infrastructure investment, I always remember, uh, you know, the we were fighting the battle then about, uh, you know, uh, investment and future. Uh, working things yeah. in the forest industry, and, and so they put it in Abbotsford. But there are yeah, no trees in Abbotsford. Exactly. You know, it has to be here, and we have to fight for that uh, with all the communities. Couldn't agree more, and I think that when we take a look at what's happening in the outlying areas, uh, that has a direct economic impact on us. Absolutely. Uh, those are our trading partners. Exactly. Uh, we depend on yeah. people coming in from Vanderhoof and Fort St. James and McKenzie. Uh, when they're hit with a downturn in the forest sector, uh, we feel it. Yeah. And that's why I'm strengthened more and more by my resolve to, to, to make Prince George uh, a service center to assist those exactly. communities. Exactly. Uh, and we have the ability. Yeah. Uh, we need to have that recognition. I talk about it with the provincial government, with the federal government. Uh, we need to be recognized for that. Yeah, and we cannot say it often enough, no. right? And then, then the impact of, uh, yeah, uh, you know, we see it every day coming through Prince George, of Prince Rupert. Uh, you know, and then mm -hmm. the, the, the line from there to the Midwestern United States, yep. uh, it much, much more economically viable, much shorter, and much more room yep. on the infrastructure to get there. How do you see the, it is already developing somewhat as an inland port here. I remember the first time I referred to Prince George as an inland port, I had to do a lot of explaining. Yeah. Uh, but it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, and, and we are tied so tightly, and perhaps it's, a, it's, it's one of the best, no, uh, you know, best kept secrets, but we're tied so tightly to the port of Prince Rupert. If you take a drive along First Avenue and you see, see the container shipments that are coming into our community, uh, that's as a result of the Port of Prince Rupert. Exactly. As their business grows, and it has every year for the last number of years, so does our business with CN Rail on First Avenue. Yeah. Uh, employment is important to me to yeah. have uh, those employees here. 
but the distribution point out of here, as you know, John goes to Winnipeg and then down into Chicago. Correct. Uh, and I've said a lot of times, we need to uh, let people know what CN Rail means to us on First Avenue. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that bill uh, for increases, uh, what are they talking about now? 10% per year? Yeah, you know, you hear anywhere from 7, 8, 9% increase in yeah. shipping capacity out of the Port of Prince Rupert, and that has a direct, as I said, direct impact on us. Yeah, and then the other thing that will happen is that uh, not only are the containers here, but will happen a certain percentage of those will stay behind, yep. need further manufacturing. The spinoff from it is amazing, right? It is, and that's, uh, you know, you and I have talked a bit over the time around uh, secondary industry that comes to our city because of that. Exactly. And that's exactly what you're referring to. So yeah. if you have the, you know, CN, the resource uh, sector, LNG, mining, forestry, we're seeing yeah. a number of secondary uh, industry businesses coming to town to support those people and support that industry. Yeah, and, and a good example is, again, the $5 billion proposal, uh, you know, for the ethylene plant. Yep. Uh, it's it's uh, whether you agree with it or not, uh, it's somebody that's coming to Prince George and taking a look at our community for potential investment. And that's how this is played. Uh, yeah. You need to be on everybody's radar. Smart money is watching us, right? Smart money is watching us. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Now, the other thing that, uh, that I do, uh, you know, and, and I kind of think you probably do the same, is that I have a thing hanging in my office and it says $25.47, that's how much I had when I came. And then, but underneath it says, attitude, passion, work ethic. Have you got something like that? Yeah, so you know, for me it's about collaboration and collaboration is made and it's dependent on the speed of trust. Yeah. And uh, I also have another piece where I, uh, it sits right on, on my, uh, on my uh, monitor stand in front of me where we you know, plug away all day long. But, um, <laughs> And, and it, it, it talks about you have a choice. Yeah. You have a choice to wake up in the morning and fulfill your dreams or just sit back and say, no, I'm not prepared to work hard to achieve that. Yeah, and complain. And, and complain. Yeah. You li live in that negative world. Yeah. And um, that's been so important for me. Yeah. Uh, is those two things stick with me. It's, a, it's just a part of what uh, and how I want to deal with my job and my life day after day. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before the interview and, and so, but I said in the same as you, is I, I usually get up at 5.30 in the morning I, I, and then when I get up, I think I'm late already. Yeah. You know, and I always make my bed and then I try to be out yeah. of there and then I always feel like I'm late and I'm usually one of the last ones to leave the mill yeah. and, and I'm nearly 80, you yeah. know, so. <laughs> well, but, but it, I think it's, uh, it's just, it's built into us. Yeah. I'm usually in the office between 7 and 7.30 and my days will end sometimes at 8 or 9 at night. But yeah. it's the love of the job and it's the commitment to the job. And if you don't have that, then uh, you're just not going to succeed. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the, uh, you know, I did the math here and, and you're going to turn 65 this year. I'm already there. Are you already there? <laughs> You know, so I turned 65 that mean... in December of uh, 20, uh, 2019. So does that I mean you're saying that? Does that mean you're already planning on your return? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew the answer. No, I, I'm not planning on the <laughs> retirement. No. So, to the young people that are watching us, and even the ones that are older, and uh, saying, looking forward to to the region, Prince George, the forest industry, and all the other things. How fortunate are we to live here, right? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, John, ten. Yeah. We are so fortunate. Uh, we continue to grow. We continue to be on the cusp of great things. Yes, Prince George is changing. I think we're changing uh, for the good. I think we are becoming more uh, of a city that uh, will attract and retain young people. Yeah. The opportunity is unbelievable for them. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that people who are retiring and seniors uh, have an opportunity to stay in Prince George. Yeah. I think we've become a well-rounded community with yeah. a tremendous amount of offerings. Yeah. And uh, you talked about smart money looking at us. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to get Prince George to the point as well that people around the country are taking notice of Prince George. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have some growing pains. There's no question for about sure. it. Yeah. But in order for us and any community to survive, you need to be competitive. You need to have something to sell to people yeah. so that they're attracted to your community. Yeah. Uh, and 
for as long as I'm in the job, I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. Now, the other thing about it, you know, that, uh, you know, the, I was born in Holland. And yep. then sometimes when I, I used to go back once a year and I go to places and then my family says to me, oh, I've never been there in Holland. Yeah. You have to leave in order to appreciate Absolutely. it sometimes. Now, in Prince George's, you know, it's again unique in terms of what we have here. We got, and maybe you can talk about it a little bit, we have an ancient forest here. Yeah. Another a, another well kept secret. Yeah. So I've got a group of guys that I ride motorcycles with, and we go out to the ancient forest every year. Or they have a celebration. And How we close go is it to town? Oh, it's about an hour, about an hour and a bit, hour and yeah. a half or so. Out east. Out east, yeah. So we yeah. go to Purden, have breakfast, and then we, you know, it, it's drive amazing on. to it's, walk through it. It's unbelievable. They've they've uh, you know they've created um, a wooden sidewalk pathway through yeah. the forest. Uh, it, it, it's a couple it's of a kilometers, must I do, think. Right? It's a must-do, uh, and who would have thought, and we mentioned this earlier, that we would have a rainforest in the middle of our province. Unbelievable. And right. I think what it does from a forest perspective is it gives you another perspective of the forest and, and what it means to our region. Let me add another one to that. Good Sir Nature Park, yes. about 20 minutes north of Prince George. Yep. A, an absolutely unbelievable experience to see the forest yep. of Canada. Uh, and Jam Good is the fellow that uh, started it 60 years ago. Yeah. He started to pick up the samples of it, planted them, and opened it 30 years mm -hmm. ago. And uh, it is a must, must we see. We celebrated that uh, in 2019. We did. Yeah, we uh, did. And I think if you're trying to get a handle on the forest industry, it's not just about driving along Highway 16 or 97 or the back roads. Uh, that'll give you a good idea what the forest sector means yeah. to us. Yeah. But I think it's Good Sir Park. It's the ancient forest. Gives you another perspective yeah. of, of how important the forests are uh, to our ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and where we're going to go in the future. Yeah. And, and then so what I do and what you do is I, if I talk in other places, and I, I'm a speaker in different locations, I talk about Prince George as the, the center of the province of British Columbia, the spruce capital of the world, an amazing future here in this yeah. region and, and must, must, must do and, and you, must visit. Right? You, you know, I, I left uh, and did for a very long time talk about Prince George as the northern capital. Right. And for whatever reason, I didn't use the title much, uh, yeah. you know, probably, uh, you know, my first couple of years as mayor. But truly, we are the northern capital we for are. a number of reasons, John. Yeah. And uh, I just want to enhance that. I, yeah. I, and you talk about the regional approach that we yeah. take. Yeah. It's important. The leadership role. The leadership role. Working with the other communities yeah. to make us collectively stronger. Yeah, Land. absolutely. John, thank you for the interview. Thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching A History of the BC Forest Industry. Uh, watch us again next week.